In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to create malware, exploit it on computers and take full control of any computer who actually executes this type of malware. Malware is one of the most common ways to actually attack someone after phishing has been done. And everyone thinks it's very hard for a hacker to properly do malware or create malware. But these days it's just crazy easy. And I'm going to show you how. We have our hacking machine and we also have a Windows 11 with the latest update so you can see that it also works on Windows 11. So what we will be doing right now, we will be opening on our Windows hacking machine the async red. Async red is basically the tool where we will create the malware on but also host the malware on and lastly also execute all the commands to take control of the computer. So. As you can see, I created the lol in the red already, so I'm going to delete this real quick and I'm going to open the exe file. As you can see, it's all very low level and very easy. It will open up a small GUI pop-up which ports its support and you can see it's 6606, 7707 and 8808. We can start the async red or you can just add an own port yourself, which I'm not going to do in this video since it's just for demonstration purposes. So we open this up and I'm going to make this a bit bigger for you guys, but it's honestly very easy. As you can see, it already activates on my own device because I was running it on my own device as well. And you can do some commands on this as well. As you can see, it's my local host, it's a hacker machine, it's a Windows 10 Pro 64 bit, and it's running Windows Defender right now. But how do we create the malware? It's honestly so damn easy. We just right click and we can see to build this with the builder then we can choose our ip address and our dns address honestly very easy i'm going to do the local host right now since obviously just for trading purposes but i'm going to show you how hackers can actually exploit this with a very easy way after i've done this so we're going to do this on the dns and then also just port 6606 which makes it all very easy we can create an installment so when it executes or upon execute we can do a chain attack if we click this on and this will create a file name powerhouse on the app data or the temp which means if you reboot the computer it doesn't get deleted and it will reboot with it so you the user or the hacker that deployed this on your computer can always access your computer even if you reboot it and you won't even notice it unless you unless you open the temp file yourself or the app data file yourself which not a lot of people do these days but we're not gonna turn this on right now and you can also do some miscellaneous stuff like anti-analysis so it doesn't get picked up by google defender and if it's process critical so it will pop up as a critical process and that you have to run it for as admin actually and um, we're going to do the anti-analysis right now we can also add a group name to it just to make it ourselves a little bit easier in our overview then we can do an assembly. I'm going actually going to do this in this video to make it a bit easier and to be, make it very visible to you guys that this is actually malware. So if we enable it, we can actually create a product out of it. So you can remember if you right click something and you click properties, you have this type of stuff like target, product, start and stuff like that. You can actually copy this from another program and make it look like you're running just another program. So let's clone it. Let's clone something. So let's go to desktop and just take Obsidian for example. Obsidian is a note taking tool. So everyone who installs Obsidian right now will then obviously inst be installing the Obsidian we are deploying right now. And this makes it an executable as well. So as you can see, product Obsidian, description is Obsidian, company is Obsidian, the copyright claim is by Danalyst Inc. And we can see it also copies the full version. Then we can go to the next one, which is icon. Also, we can clone the icon. So we enable this icon, click on this empty box, and we click on Obsidian again. So as you can see, it will clone the Obsidian icon as well. And then Bolt. Very easy. We can click on simple obfuscator, but we're gonna skip this for now and just gonna build it. It takes a while, but not actually that long. As you can see, we're gonna call this obsidian. And it took us maybe five seconds and the malware has been created. 
So we're gonna minimize this because this has to be kept open. We're gonna open up our async red again. And as you can see, we have the obsidian at exe actually looks like the normal obsidian at exe. We're gonna copy this. And we're gonna go to our Windows 11 machine. So as you can see, we copied it right now. And if we try to open it, it doesn't really do anything. But on the background, it will start running. Which means if we go back to our hacking device, we can see it perfectly got executed 192.168.21.130 on port 88.08. It's a local host, it's a default user or a default group, which we, as you know, we assigned. Then we also got the HWID of the virtual machine. We got the username, which is user. We see it's a Windows 11 64 bit and we see which payload level or payload version it is and we see the windows antivirus is enabled and it is right now ran from the active window program manager so this is all very nice but what we can do with this is actually insane so we can also actually send files to the disk so if you just click on it and we just go to the desktop here and we go back to our async rad and we just take just random malware i created a bit earlier we open it up it will just close this, but then if we go to our Windows machine documents, we can see this got implemented right now as we speak. What else can we do? Amazing things actually, we can monitor it and this is actually very fun. We can monitor it and we can remote access it. That's actually insane. We can remote access it. We can take screenshots and we can actually do some stuff in here as well. We can move the mouse. We can click on everything and we can just remote access it like you would do it with TeamViewer or any desk. Let's close it up, right click. We can also create a keylogger or a password recovery. So as you can see, it's kind of client has no password. So right now, obviously it doesn't have passwords, but it's a clean machine. But otherwise it would send passwords towards my device, the async rat. We can also just go to file manager itself so we can go immediately to the file manager and see what he has been downloading and everything. As you can see, we have full control over the device. We can see the process manager, so what processes are running right now in the background. As you can see, I still have to install the VM tools. And we can obviously report a window and run it and stop a window. You can also open the webcam, but it is not connected with a webcam, so this is not gonna work, but otherwise we would be able to open up the webcam. That's a monitoring part where we can see actually what is happening. But then we can also in the miscellaneous, we can seed torrents, we can USB spread, we can bot kill, we can even remote shell and do DOS attack from host Google. We can do so many chain attacks through this malware. That's actually insane. We can do a file searcher so we can look for files. If you are looking actively for passwords or emails, we can actually do this through this. And we can do some extra stuff like send a message box. You have been hacked. And we can just click OK. If we go back to the Windows 11, you see you have been hacked on the screen. And this user will probably mess up or anything. Then if we go to other stuff in the extra, we can obviously do a blank screen. We can run it the user will see a blank screen but we can also stop it so we can actually mess up a little bit with the user and then obviously the user sees a normal screen again so how hackers use this is very easy we have created the malware and we know the malware is working obviously it's only working for remote or local so it's not really going to work if someone else from an outside network will access this file but how hackers do use this is in two ways. Either they do phishing and they send you files or do spamware where they do spamming with ads or adware or something in that way. Or they want to make it themselves a little bit easier and they actually go to, let's say that I'm going to go to the Tor browser right now since it's a bit easier and a bit faster. So I'm going to connect. And we're gonna go to virus total and this is actually an ID or an ID this is actually a thing that does happen a lot so we go to virus total we choose a file and we upload the obsidian file 
So we have to go to async rat obsidian obsidian and this will obviously make it so that it is detectable but a lot of the time there will be researchers or just normal people that are just testing a little bit the software and downloading actual software. So if you confirm the upload it will have to be a robot obviously and as you can see it's starting to scan right now and uh, also, it's gonna de be detectable for everything as a backdoor error, as a Trojan, as a malicious confidential file. Just as a malicious file, but that's not the whole point of it. A lot of researchers actually download these tools to investigate it. And when investigating it, they have to execute the malware, obviously. So they will execute it in virtual machines mo most of the time. But it doesn't really matter because we can even hop through virtual machines and that's not a problem at all. So once they open it and they will execute it or some other dude does it and they doesn't open it in a virtual machine and just on his laptop, then we also see obviously here the connected devices. And this is how hackers do it all of the time. So be cautious, don't just open files, don't just click links, don't just download malware and always have a proper antivirus in place to secure and save your device. With that being said, be cautious and I hope you learned a little bit about how a malware has been made. If you like it and you want to know a little bit more or you want to secure your company even better than you already have been securing it, Make sure to schedule a meeting with me, a consultation meeting, and then I will go over some security issues and we'll discuss how we can scale your IT.